Adventures in Wonderland stands as a pinnacle of nonsensical literature, inspiring generations and garnering endless admiration. But beyond the beloved children's book, with its whimsical characters, there is a true story behind the writing of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It's much darker than one might expect. Today, my young detectives, we will dive deep into the lives of those responsible for bringing Alice's Adventures in Wonderland to life and examine some shocking realities along the way. You might be surprised to hear that the classic Alice in Wonderland was based on a real person named Alice. Incredibly, many of the outlandish characters in Alice's Wonderland were based on real people. From the White Rabbit to the Mad Hatter, Cheshire Cat Queen of Hearts and Dada. Despite being written for children, the story of Alice's true identity is far from what one would consider appropriate for a young audience. Lewis Carroll, the famed author of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, is actually a pseudonym for Charles Ludwig Dutchson. Born in 1832 in England, he adapted this pen name to conceal his true identity and protect his privacy. He was one of 11 children. As a kid, he entertained all his brothers and sisters with made-up stories and games. As a child, he was dyslexic and suffered from a terrible speech impediment. He stuttered badly and his dyslexia kept him from reading. This is a remarkable disability for one who would later become one of the most famous authors of children's fiction. Charles tried very hard to be productive despite the diagnosis, and he was still able to learn. In fact, his dyslexia helped him in math, and he eventually became a mathematician. As Charles got older, he worked as a tutor and later became a lecturer at Oxford University. The story says he was an odd young man who became a rather awkward and shy adult. Those who knew him described him as a devout mathematician and scholar with a pure heart. Charles shared that there resonates more with children than adults. They are kinder and easier to get along with than adults. He spent a lot of time with children all his life. Still recently, this seemingly innocuous relationship has been put into question. As a young man, Charles didn't often boast of understanding literary achievements, such as publication in magazines. Nevertheless, he says ironically, I don't think I'm reading anything worthy of publication, but I'm not discouraged and I probably will one day. The multifaceted young man seems to have been modest in his writing, but firm in his goals and achieved them. While at Oxford, Dutchson met Henry Liddell, with whom he occasionally worked. One of the first friendships he made was with the dean's son, Harry, who was nine years old when Dutchson himself was in his thirties. In Victorian days, there was a trend toward unmarried young men in families. They were considered uncles. These young men were invited to dine or travel with the family as family members in the role of an uncle, even though they were often unrelated. The role Charles played was that of uncle to Harry. He taught him math, and they often played together. Insofar as Charles was an avid photographer, the Lidl family hired him to photograph the entire family. After that, the family relationship with Charles really blossomed. With their parents' consent, Charles Dutchson often took the children on excursions, picnics, or boat rides on the Thames. On one of the outings on July 1, 1862, Dutchson and his colleague took their three young daughters for a boat ride. There was nothing unusual about this as he had taken them on trips before. However, as they rode down the river, Dutchson noticed that the girls were bored. He tried to entertain them with a story similar to those he had told his siblings when he was younger. The story was made up on the spot inspired by the girls and the things surrounding them on their walk. Dion Little's books were even more inspiring. 
Dean had a ten-year-old daughter named Alice, a dark-haired girl who looks a bit like the Alice we imagine in the story today. In fact, Charles noted the specific day he met her in this diary, April 25, 1856. This was six years before the fateful boat trip. During this boat ride, Charles told the girls the tale that would eventually turn into the story of Alice in Wonderland that we know today. After hearing the fantastic story, young Alice begged Charles to write it down. The next day, he immediately began writing the first draft of the novel. Following the month of hard work, Charles took the girls out for a boat ride one more time, where he taught them his latest version of the story with new characters and adventures. After getting the approval, he read the story to the other children making amendments. It took him about a year, and he kept adding details to the Alice tale, which has doubled in size since the first draft. Charles was drawing illustrations for the storybook Drawing Real Rabbits. He even tried to copy Alice's face from a photograph in every detail, but his images were never used because all his characters always looked too sad. To publish a children's book without damaging his academic career at Oxford, Charles invented the pseudonym Lewis Carroll. This nickname was coined based on his real name, Charles Ludwig. Lewis was an anglicized form and the Latin word Ludwig and Carroll was taken from the Latin word Carlos. In 1864, Dutchson gifted a handwritten version to Alice Liddell as a Christmas present. It was called Alice Underground Adventures. He wrote on the first page, in memory of a summer day. The first version was short and we were missing some characters, like the Mad Hatter or the Cheshire Cat, which were added later. Initially, Dean Little was excited by the description of the story that was inspired by his daughter Alice. He proposed that the title be altered to what we now recognize as Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and his suggestion was accepted. Before that, the title had changed from Alice's Time in Elfland to Alice Among the Fairies and Alice Among the Goblins. Little and Charles quarreled before the story was published. This was around the time he gave Alice to hand-drawn book. After that, the Lidl's children were no longer allowed to see him. Dean and Dutchson were close friends, and the Lidl's trusted Dutchson to pick up their daughters without their presence. But seemingly out of nothing, they cut off all communication with him. What may have happened between them has been a topic of speculation for years, and many people have surmised that Charles did something to Alice that caused the breakdown of all communication. But there is no evidence of that. On second thought, Charles seemed fascinated and almost obsessed with young Alice. Still, there is too little evidence to say what happened between them. Charles is known to have kept a diary, by the page where he recorded that they were mysteriously turned out and lost forever. This has caused countless theories and guesses as to what happened. The only real evidence that something might have happened between Dutchson and Alice is the sudden split in communication with their family. The Liddles, both parents and children, didn't see him for several months. After some time, the D and Lorena gradually rekindled their relationship with him, but he was never allowed to see the children again or take them on picnic or boat rides. It's perplexing to ponder what Charles could have done for Dean and Lorena to expel the man from their children's lives yet maintain an amicable bond with him. In his diaries, Charles often wrote about his struggle with sin. He prayed God would give him the strength to resist his sinful desires. Despite the rumors of Charles' affection for Alice, his diary entries feature her far less than we may have expected. In fact, he never calls exactly what he means by sin. There have been rumors that he may have offered marriage to young Alice, which may have caused a rift between the family and Charles. 
It would have been strange for the little family to have a 33-year-old Dutch son as a son-in-law when their daughter was only 11. There is another theory that is supported by some historical evidence. In this theory, it's not Alice, but rather her mother, Lorena, who is the most important. Lorena was a great beauty, rumored to be secretly in love with uh, one of her husband's colleagues. Whether it could have been Charles would suddenly explain why the Diane didn't want to see him around his family. Also, the diary entry about sin could be interpreted as his thoughts about adultery and his feelings for Larina rather than for Alice. But again, this is only an assumption. There is evidence of his relationships with adult women. He was not only with young girls, as many think. As a photographer, Charles captured shots of many children. His portraits of Jan Ellis are the only physical remains depicting his obsession. The pictures show Ellis half undressed, the harness of her dress falling off her shoulder. It's important to remember in these photos she is only six years old, but the historical context is also crucial. Reports say the parents were present at every photoshoot. Dutchson made a suspicious proposal to the girl's mother about another daughter, who was only eight years old, telling her he wanted to organize a photo session with her. He wrote, We must not miss this opportunity. We can snap some wonderful pictures of Annie's gorgeous face, since she might think herself too old next year, but I genuinely pray that doesn't happen. Perhaps that was the usual way to put it at the time especially since Charles seemed to be a man who was not shy at all. But in the context of today, these words are profoundly troubling. The strange pictures were taken long before Alice in Wonderland was invented. And the parents saw them and still allowed their daughter to be near Charles for years. And we can conclude that it definitely wasn't these weird photo shoots that provoked the quill. As strange and creepy as it sounds, it's important to remember that when Dutchson was writing, it was the middle of the 18th century. Lidl probably saw nothing wrong with Shell's interest in their daughter, and the particularly closed photos, because he believed that no one would have inappropriate feelings or attraction to the child. It was just something incomprehensible to him. A year after the mystery squirrel, Alice in Wonderland, was finally published. It was greeted with rave reviews. Inspired by the real Alice, Dutchson also looked at the things around him and created his own magical world and preposterous characters, taking images of other people, common expressions and sounds. To create the White Rabbit, Charles was inspired by Diane Little, who was a very busy man. He was always in a hurry checking his pocket watch, he was often late. Besides, the door in his office was so small that it was snaped the rabbit hole. The elusive green and the disappearing Cheshire cat were based on other things. The phrase, smile like a Cheshire cat, was widely known at the time. It meant to smile broadly. In addition, Dutchson himself grew up in the village of Cheshire, where he encountered the famous variety of Cheshire cheese, often shaped like green cats. Another character, the Queen of Hearts, is infamous for her cruelty, temper, and the famous phrase in the book, cut off their hats. Her prototype for the cruel, selfish character is believed to be none other than the legendary Grumpy Queen Victoria. It's said that she gave him his original concept for this sullen figure. Dodo, the character portrayed in Alice's earliest films and books, is thought to be a manifestation of Dutchson himself. This can be attributed to how he pronounced his name Dodo Dutchson, due to a speech impediment. The most interesting of the characters created by Dutchson was the Mad Hatter, who was added to the story just before publication. Mad as a Hatter was another common phrase of the Victorian era. It alluded to a rather tragic phenomenon in history. Hatters are the name for people who made hats. 
they often use poisonous substances such as mercury to turn animal wool into felt for hats. Hatters often suffered from mercury poisoning, and it literally drove them insane. The patients had mental and physical disorders such as irritability, poor eyesight, mumbling or confused speech, muscle twitching and tremors. Dutchson used mercury poisoning to explain why the hatter went insane. Many suggested that Dutchson was drugged when he wrote Alice in Wonderland. The unusual characters and imaginative universe were too fantastic to be conceived by a creative mind alone. Some have speculated that Dutchson took some kind of drugs while writing to come up with a bizarre and peculiar story. If so, opium was probably the drug of choice. It was widely used and utterly legal during that time. In the book, a large hookah is smoked and the smoke gets in Alice's face. The smoke in the story often distorts the reality around Alice, and the mushrooms in the story are also magical. When Alice eats a piece, she is transformed in size. Also from the bottle labeled Drink Me and the cake labeled Eat Me, they have drug summaries taped to them. This peculiar situation begs the question, if Charles alluded to and portrayed drugs to alter reality in his narrative, did he also use them in fact? While we may never have a definite answer, it's worth considering. Historians have largely dismissed the drug theory surrounding this eccentric author, likely due to his capability in other fields, such as mathematics, hinting towards, and inherently creative mind. Instead, they had another explanation. He was said to have suffered most of his life from severe migraines. Migraines are notorious for their excruciating pain, and in Charles' case, they were so extreme that they experienced peculiar visions. Dutchson's particular migraines were caused by a rare neurological disorder. It distorted his reality, his perception of size, particularly his hands and feet, was often distorted. Sometimes they seemed very large or unnaturally small. Based on this, Alice often changed size in the story as well. Perhaps Charles was expressing in the story how his own mind was deceiving him. These strange migraines were officially discovered in 1950s by a psychiatrist named John Todd and have since been known as Todd Syndrome. Still, it's more commonly referred to as Alice in Wonderland Syndrome. After the publication of Alice in Wonderland and the tremendous success of the story, Dutchson began writing a sequel. A few years after his first encounter with Alice Little, he encountered another little girl who inspired him to write a second book. Although this one seemed particularly eerie, the girl's name was also Alice, as if he were attempting to make up for what was lost in his relationship with Alice Little. Alice Reiki talked to Charles and told him about the reflection in the mirror and that she felt that everything was upside down there. This idea inspired him to write the Through the Looking Glass of what else found. The sequel was written six months after the first book and sold out within seven weeks of publication. It was a darker version of the Wonderland scenes. After writing both books, Dutchson began to separate his personal and professional life from Lewis Carroll's. Every time admirers sent him letters, he refused to read or even respond to them. Instead, he requested that they be returned back to the tender. Despite his outlandish writing style, Dutchson himself was pretty quiet and introverted. Charles' journey through life was plagued by many highs and lows, ultimately culminating in a woeful final. Charles fell ill with pneumonia in 1898 and died the same year. But what happened to the real Alice? Everyone knew she was the inspiration for the story. 
it was no secret that Dutchson or Carol wrote the story for her and about her. Her pictures were everywhere with the book, so people knew what she looked like and where she lived. She struggled to avoid popularity and questions about Alice in Wonderland. Like Charles, Alice was tired of the attention associated with Alice in Wonderland. In 1928, she sold the illustrated book Dutchson had gifted her to an American dealer for a straightering 15,400 pounds. That's more than $20,000 today. The book was later returned to England and is now in a British museum. Only when she was 80 years old did Alice begin to accept the association of herself with the book. Two years later Alice died at the age of 82, but her legacy continues to thrive. Despite the lack of evidence, the idea that Dutchson had misplaced and inappropriate feelings for Alice has survived. Even more peculiarly, Dutchson denied in the later years that any certain little girl was the source of inspiration for Alice, his famous literary character. The audience was skeptical of this statement because the poem included Alice Liddell's full name, which was detected at the end of Through the Looking Glass. But Dutchson objected and said something was his usual practice of dedicating poems to different girls he knew in real life. Charles was both a gifted writer and mathematician and a shy man who preferred the company of children to that of adults. We may never know if there is more to this, good or bad. Can know what caused the quarrel between Dutchson and the Lidos, a conflict that irrevocably destroyed their friendship. But we can say with certainty that the world of Alice in Wonderland has a story that is no less interesting than a fantasy story. Thank you for watching this video, my young detectives. Leave your comments below and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next episode. Bye.